Hello traders, Mark Chapman here. Uh, today's date is the 19th of December 2017. No trading now, so we'll just uh, continue uh, on with uh, a bit of training. Um, and I just wanted to uh, highlight this uh, area on the chart. The other thing uh, that you may not be aware of is this this um, market manipulations happen at prior levels of, that have been support and resistance, just to make that uh, nice and clear for you um, so it's not just the fact that you can uh, you can trade these uh, levels that are just plain and uh, basic simple uh, spot and resistance uh, levels your bobby basic ones it also uh, is exactly the same uh, with uh, the a uh, little bit more complex levels that have, as i say have been uh, support and resistance etc um, uh, previously so this is one of those uh, the, one of those examples uh, so bear that in mind, uh, not just your standard, uh, your standard levels of support uh, and uh, and uh, resistance. Okay, uh, in many ways they're uh, they're slightly better um, because a lot of people trade these levels um, that have been both. A lot of people are aware of them. Loads of eyes on it, and and again, you know, as I've said a million times, the more that uh, the uh, the level is uh, clear for people to see the more eyeballs on it more people trade it more people trade it more uh, more liquidity more liquidity in the form of stops better for those um, those people wanting to manipulate those levels so and when I when I'm talking about levels and having eyeballs on it I'm not talking about going back you know a million miles in in history just a, a decent um, sort of uh, view of, of, of whatever time compression you're looking at just zoomed out a bit right so you can see the structures uh, clearly um, that th those are the types of levels that we were, uh, were most uh, we're most interested in again who's looking back you know uh, huge uh, huge uh, amounts of time not really uh, not too many people really not certainly not people are doing um, you know trying to day trade etc so um so this is a, a, a lovely level the other thing you want to be aware of when you have uh, the, the best types of uh, markets i prefer to trade uh, these strategies are, are in like a, a sideways volatile type environment and that's where you'll see big big moves in price that are very vertical in nature very little in the way of a retracement oftentimes uh, price will put in a new low and it'll be sharply followed up with a new high right and vice versa new highs followed up by uh, new lows and again what's indicative is very few retracements and uh, the price action tends to be uh, vertical in its angle it also the candles uh, uh, tend to be longer uh, larger candles as well um, that, that i enjoy trading those types of markets um, but you can trade these things in trending markets too um, stop hunts in trends are more difficult um, but not not impossible uh, so you can certainly learn uh, to do that with me um, but uh, yeah i do prefer to to trade these types of uh, these types of environments it's always good to understand the environment that you are looking to uh, participate in prior to applying your craft right because you know uh, if someone's trying to trade a stop hunt let's say off a off a, a, a level of resistance in a trend then that might not work so well right the the, the actual stop hunt you want to be uh, looking to take in a scenario like that is you want to be looking uh, for the stop hunts to occur um, uh, within that uh, within that trend and then for the trend to continue higher or lower you don't you, you, you're not sort of wanting to to uh, catch the proverbial falling uh, knife or a, a, a fast moving trending strong uh, real money move market you're gonna you're gonna get crushed so it's you've always got to think before you apply apply a strategy what what type of market environment are we in now of course that can change but market environments are quite slow to change if, if you look at this area here you know this has been trading like this for for a period of time um you know something usually fundamental needs to shift in order for something to go from say sideways volatile to a, a trending type condition so a lot of traders get this wrong and it's, it's is why it's worth talking about because people are people are applying strategies that will work great in a in a certain type of environment but the shit and useless in other types of environments but if you're not considering the environment you're in you're going to be playing the wrong 
uh, tools for the for that trade um, and irrespective of how good you are you're not going to do very well because you've you've misread the, the market condition or worse you haven't even considered it so there's really only six types of uh, market conditions um, that, I, that I sort of uh, uh, sort of think about. You've got your, your sideways volatile, which is how I've just described it. Then you've got your sideways dead, right, which is obvious. It's not going anywhere, just totally uh, dead. You don't see that too much in fairness in uh, currencies, but in other uh, products you might. Um, then you've got uh, strong uh, real money move trends that are just relentless uh, very little pullbacks nice angle uh, like a 45 degree angle would be the perfect uh, example of a trend very few pullbacks and just sort of relentless in in nature um, or, or and obviously you've got that in an uptrend and a downtrend and then you've got volatile uh, trending markets which are, are, are trending markets but tend to be uh, deeper retracements uh, no sooner do you do you put in uh, do you put in a new high the, the the retracement's deep and the new high that it will put in isn't very uh, large comparative to the prior swing uh, swing high or swing low right um, so if you can figure out what market state you're in then you can you can make a better job of uh, reading uh, what market uh, environment you're in to, to, and importantly what strategy to use under those uh, conditions or you might uh, only prefer to trade a certain environment uh, and then you may not uh, choose to trade the other uh, market states maybe you don't feel confident or comfortable doing that that's absolutely fine too uh, so long as you're just playing your craft in the right environment you sh you'll, you'll be fine um so it's important to understand that so when you are considering these types of uh, sideways volatile markets um looking for levels pretty recent uh, history just zoom out and have a look and see if you've got uh, any standard ones or if you've got some that have been uh, support and resistance as well and then you can uh, you can uh, start your analysis and figure out what to do next so the other thing i want to mention as well is you you need to be a, a little bit more tactically like spatially aware of of other people's uh, trading tactics so that you can also get an insight of supply and demand i'll give you an example if you if you were to um we did buy down here but imagine if you were to buy down here and you were just a standard support and resistance guy or girl right and this was this was like a perfect level of support okay now if if you're looking for a manipulation over here then it matters what happened to the what these traders are, are considering um if they're in that trade and making money don't don't just focus all your attention on the the current price action and forget about uh, the fact that there may be people who are taking profit in and around an area where you want to uh, you want to um, uh, get on board for a potential manipulation right it, it's it's not that the the the, um, the the um you know the manipulation won't supersede the, the the supply demand equation of these traders down here but it's important to know that if you're a buyer here then that has an impact if you're considering what they're thinking when price gets over here because what will they likely do given the fact that they've got big money in their uh, account currently uh, what they're likely going to do uh, when there's a you know well-defined level on the other side of uh, what you could describe as a, a bit of a range they're going to take profit and if they're a buyer down here then that matters because over here in order to, uh, to realize that profit they've got to sell to exit so now we know something about the supply demand equation over here by putting ourselves in the shoes of other market participants and what they're what they are likely going to do there's there's the thing with trading traps and manipulations is everyone's motivated for different reasons right people uh, are going through forced liquidation events so people are getting stopped out that's that stop loss stop hunt process that matters right but 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 they're highly motivated to get stopped out maybe they've took too much risk you know they don't want to lose any more money the, the it's a it's a huge motivating factor that the, when they're losing money it um it, it matters what those people uh, how those people are, are behaving and, and you have to consider it and it also matters the motivations of those who are making money because 
you know, if you think about uh, how motivated you are when you get stopped out of a trade that you think's uh, going against you, then also place yourself in the position of of, of other uh, market participants who are actually making money, right? They're actually making money in and around that area. Are these guys motivated? Hell yeah, right? They they see the dollar signs and they 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 are highly motivated to exit their positions. What creates is uh, what's referred to as a crowded exit. Everyone's everyone's trying to bail out of. of prior to these um prior to these areas to to you know to get the money the buyer uh, who is making money is wanting to do that so if you get a manipulation or, or at the level and some type of stop hunt and then down you know you've got good reason to also uh, not only be confident in the stop hunt manipulation itself but also to realize that other market participants are bailing on their positions right and taking money because they're highly motivated to do that and if they if they were buyers then they must sell to exit if they were sellers then they must buy to to exit it's always the opposite transaction to uh, come out of a trade however uh, in, in whatever state you're exiting your trade right whether or not you're losing whether or not you're manually taking uh, a stop loss like exiting yourself uh, whether you've been stopped out automatically whether or not you're trailing some profit whether or not and you get knocked out whether or not you're exiting um, manually with profit all it's always always the opposite transaction you've got to know that that's why i say you've got to be a bit more spatially aware than just uh, just purely focusing on the level you've got to consider other market participants and what they might be uh, what they might be thinking so um yeah just something to uh, bear in mind uh so this level we do have uh, some entry trees Right, so it's come to the level, it's sold off, it's pulled back. So this is more complex entry cheese than just your standard sell-off, right? Because it's it's not only dropped, it's now retraced, and there'll have been people who went short thinking uh, of, a, of, of a retracement entry because that level held. Um, some traders don't take the level um, the, the, uh, when it touches it. Some traders will want to see the touch off the level and then actually trade the first retracement. Um, if they can, uh, if they can get in on it. So there's there's actually two lots here of uh, of entry cheese. So if we just zoom in, see that a little bit more clearly, right? And if you I don't know if you were to put your old Fibonacci, it's probably sixty odd percent. At a guess, there we go. And take a look at the price action as well. Right. So boom, it's, it's right on the sixty one point eight percent fib. You have yourself a doji, look at that, right? It's perfect, perfect entry for that type of trader. The hard right edge, they wouldn't have known any more information, maximum, you know, that amount of information would have been uh, positive for the trade. So, you know, people getting on that, people were getting, obviously people were selling here as well a little earlier, people were selling here, um, but that's that's huge entry cheese. So this is all entry cheese, but that's, you know, that's as, that's as uh, uh, you know, uh, an exciting, sexy piece of price action that one could hope to see if you were trading that, uh, that retracement price puts in a new low, right? Pulls back, lower high, right? Lower, lower, lower high definition of a little trend off a level well-defined level of uh, resistance they th they'll believe that that's uh, off to the races so we don't just have the entry cheese in here there's a bit in here as well and the reason why i say that is because this what what you get is just thinking about traders motivations again if you've got a level of resistance or you've got a level of support and it's a really well-defined level as in this case and people want to sell off the level, right? As standard Bobby Basic uh, resistance traders, what happens to their mentality as price approaches and gets close to that level? What happens? Um, just think that they've been waiting for this damn thing to cross this range for like a week or whatever, right? What 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 tends to happen to them? I'll tell you what tends to happen to them. They want to they want to maybe come off the process ever so slightly even though the process is it's got to touch the level before i go short it's a motivating factor for people to go in slightly early right they don't want to miss out fear of missing out so the fact you had a little turn slightly earlier and that'll be like a a, a little mini uh, level of resistance anyway there's entry cheese too 
so this is you know this is a little bit more uh, complex um if you walk all the way through it and that's the best thing you can do walk all the way through uh, the price action and just consider if i was a trader taking these trades what would i do what would i think what are the motivations how, how can i put myself in the shoes of those traders and it sounds wishy-washy and it sounds a little bit you know a little bit um like a dark the dark arts of trading it's not really it's just a reflection upon yourself as an individual we've all been these traders unless you're brand new to trading right the vast majority of us have tried breakout trading have tried retracement trading have tried level trading so just put yourself back into the shoes of those traders and just remember the, the motivations and the feelings you felt and what made you want to take trades and what how did you feel when you were getting stopped out if you can put yourself there then you you're gaining insights to those other market participants which i can guarantee they're not thinking to that degree right they're just not uh, nobody does so you, you're gaining insights valuable insights into their behavior and that then ultimately gives you un an understanding of order flow where they'll place the stops what you know the, the other motivating factors there are in the price action etc so i hope i hope that uh, hope that's been uh, been helpful so there's entry cheese here uh, on multiple in multiple layers and then ultimately what you'd want to uh, see from here is price go up and then again you know we never know uh, we never ever ever know how it's going to look it's just a process that's always cons constant it'd be nice if you get another sell-off right at the level something very convincing like another doji or an engulfing candle or several candles oops sorry several candles because all that's doing is that's adding to the supply demand equation it's adding to the the, the carryover of stop losses at the level right this is how uh, there's a, a, an accumulation occurs above the level when the move away from this level imagine you went short in here have you bailed on this trade i wouldn't have thought so because in your mind you're thinking you know you're, you're thinking this thing's uh, going down and this is how you get the carryover of entry cheese this is how stops accumulate there'll be no stops there per se particularly anyway for, from the pre pre previous move because the moves are, are already completed you may have you know a degree of traders that are holding you know super long term uh, long dollars short aussie dollars right that, that have their stops over here but what's more, more, more important to us is understanding the the the, the order flow now and it's understanding that the stops there now today and they're accumulating and they're accumulating for all the reasons i've just given you they're accumulating because these people went in early they're accumulating because then you get the proper touch and a good sell-off they're accumulating because you know uh, breakout traders maybe sold that structure and went short in here they're accumulating because of the uh, retracement sell-off that was very convincing at the 61 right and they're accumulating potentially more so if you get some type of uh, not potentially but if you if you get some extra sell-offs and my drawings of dollars have gone to ship you get the idea it's accumulating again so then when you get the the final manipulation right it's just adding to that whole uh, supply demand equation and uh, uh, that there's a ton on the buy side uh, because of the uh, the accumulation of uh, the stops so what you would uh, then want to see obviously eventually when it happens is the breach up and then it stops all those people out then as it breaches it drags breakout traders long then you'd anticipate some retracement whatever happens there and then ultimately um ultimately the um the uh, the final uh, fuck you so i hope you found that helpful guys uh, if you want to learn more about this stuff click on the link below take care